church. Thank you so much. Well, this is odd. I get to say good afternoon, Solid Rock. Let's <laughs> try that one more time. Good afternoon, Solid Rock. <laughs> I love this. This is so interesting. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. I believe it. It's wonderful. Why don't you stand to your feet, church? Go shake someone's hand if you haven't already. For those watching live by Facebook, hello. Watching later on, hello to you as well. Go shake someone's hand if you haven't already. You know the drill. You know how this goes. And if someone's looking cold, maybe go give them a hug, but ask them first. Because that's only polite, okay? yourselves. I'll give you a topic. The Industrial Revolution was neither industrial nor revolutionized. Discuss. I don't really know what that means. Too beklimped. Armrest. Well, again, it's good to have you all here. I think let's let's keep the spirit going here. Well, I'm happy to be in the presence of the Lord. I believe that he's here with us. Let's sing Are You Washed in the Blood. You know this song. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you Trusting in his grace this hour. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? I hear those echoes. In the soul. Are 
are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed? this song. If not, it's very simple. It's song 34 in our praise books. We're going to sing to the Father, to Jesus, and to the Spirit. The song is called Father, I Adore You. Sing it with me. Father, I adore you. May my life be for you. I Sing, Jesus, I adore you. Jesus, I adore you. May my life be for you. How I love you. Sing, Spirit, I adore you. Spirit, I adore you. Sing that one once more. Father, I adore you. May my life be for you. How I love you. Sing, Jesus, I adore you. Jesus, I adore you. Church, I appreciate you singing with me. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Good afternoon, church. <laughs> like a minute to there. God bless you for being in God's house today. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're glad to see each and every one of those listen. Radio, television, and streaming. Love that. That's awesome. And God bless you for that. Uh, like, so glad you're here. We've got a couple things I just wanted to share before we go on. Um, we are doing a uh, medical crash course here through missions work, and it's going to be awesome. And for those who's interested in that, you can see me or you see Vaughn there, she'll wave her hand, Beverly. And we have some packets. Some of y'all asked me for some packets They're on that back table back there. Fill them out, whatever you can on it, fill it out and get it back to me. And I appreciate it. But I'm looking forward to that coming up. We've got classes coming up, I think it's March. 
And uh, if you want to, it doesn't whether you have experience or not, doesn't matter. Um, if you don't know CPR, or you, I think if you need to be recertified in that, see us, we get those classes, that's part of that too. And, um, but check it to that, so I'm ex and we're gonna go to um, West Virginia, War West Virginia, and spend some time down there helping in the missions field, in the medical section, the area of things that people need help in the medical things. So I'm looking forward to that coming up. Yeah. And the classes will be held here over at our schoolhouse, so you won't have to go far, <laughs> amen. And, um, and after church, some of our gentlemen, if you could, we need, so we've gotten a lot of medical uh, equipment and things have been donated, Amen. and we can use these admissions or people who need them. Um, the crew went and got them yesterday, and Brother Roger and them picked it up, and Yvonne, but they need some help unloading the truck, the truck and the trailer, nothing big, but we need some guys to do that over the schoolhouse after church. And if you just see Roger Blanche, that'd be awesome. And um, it's just wonderful those to be used to help others, amen. David Musselman, thank you. We will schedule him for tomorrow, but in, because of the impending weather of snow, uh, which we don't know, the kids will like it, you know. But um, <laughs> uh, we was having him come and uh, play and do some music. He's a wonderful man, him and his family, and, but we're gonna have them here next Sunday. So come on out next Sunday and see this awesome singer. You, it's, it's, it's just a wonderful gentleman, and you'll be truly blessed, I know. And I'm gonna, do I pass that thing? Yep. There you are, there she is. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> it's Saturday, I don't get up before now. What y'all talking about? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, God bless you for being here. It's good to see everyone. Lots going on. Uh, lift the nose in prayer. I should lift the uh, Doc Sater's family up. Steve is passing up his father. Lift his family up in prayer. He got all the way to Missouri. Yeah, I thought about seeing on Facebook, so good. God bless him. And, um, this time we're going to take our morning tithes and offerings so our deacons would come forward, please. That would be great. Or the afternoon. Embrace it. Embrace it. Embrace it. It's all Embrace it. <laughs> <laughs> Verse for the week. Search for the Lord and for his strength. Can you continually seek him? Remember the wonders he has performed. Amen. His miracles and the rulings he has given. First Chronicles 16, 11, and 12. Amen. Let's turn over to Miss Kim. Thank you. I know this song is in your hymn book if you would like to follow along with me. 
Um, but I apologize off the top of my head, I'm not sure what number in the hymn book it is. So um, once I start singing it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about and can look it up yourself, it's fine. Um, but I, I know this time of the year with it being winter, it puts some people on edge. I would say unnecessarily, but I can't really fully lean into that. Um, the weather scares people a lot. And with some bad experiences and just the danger in it, I, I can understand. And so I know when some people hear the word snow, mm -mm, mm -mm. I am not one of those people. Just I, I, I beam. It's wonderful. Like, oh my gosh, this is so great. But there are storms in our lives. See the way I, I did that? That... Um, that would make anyone afraid. And whether you know they're coming or not, we're all going to face them one way or the other. That's why we have church. That's why we pray. That's why we talk to each other. That's why we share what's going on. Because we're supposed to be there for each other and lift each other up. Amen. But sometimes there might be things that you face that nobody else either knows about or has any understanding about. And it's especially in those moments when you can just hand it over to the Lord. I'm not saying he makes everything go away and makes it all better, but he is there with you the entire time. And that's what this song is about, is that, Lord, you know, just stay with me till the storm passes by. Yeah. And I hope that you enjoy this song. Feel free to sing it with me if you like. dark of the midnight have I all hid my face while the storm howls above me and there's no hiding place mid the crash of the thunder precious Lord hear my cry keep me safe Till the storm passes by Till the storm passes over Till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever From the sky Hold me fast, let me stand the storm passes by many times Satan whispered there is no need to try for there's no end of sorrow there's no hope by and by but I know Tomorrow I'll rise where the storms never darken the skies till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. storm passes by when the long night has ended and the storms come no more let me stand in thy presence on that bright peaceful shore in that land where the tempest never comes lord may i dwell with thee when the storm passes by till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds 
no more till the clouds roll forever from the skies hold me fast let me stand in the hollow of thy hand keep me safe till the storm passes by that's one of my favorites I'm gonna attempt this next one I can't promise anything but I'm gonna try I know I said that the last like the last time I did a song like this and I feel like it went well I'll leave it at that know this song. The song is called God of Wonders by Third Day. I thought it might be nice to sing about the Lord that has the power over the weather and everything else.
so I appreciate that. Now at this time, Mike, this time we're going to call Mike Duff forward for our afternoon scripture reading. Still got to get that in my head. Good afternoon, church. A little different being in here on Saturday, isn't it? Now we know how the, the Jews feel on Saturday. We, we come in and, and worship on Saturday. I just thank God that we have a church that's open any time. You know, it don't make no difference when it is. We're here to worship. And I don't think God minds if it is on Saturday at all. I don't think he does at all. Before I start in scripture today, I'd like to say a few things. Um, of course, we all see what's going on in our world right now today. I don't think anyone's in, in this room surprised at anything that's going on today. But it is what it is. And uh, we're at a crossroads, folks. Not only on where we stand, but we're at a crossroads now between... Who are we going to listen to? Who are we going to obey today? It come, it's going to come down to this, folks. It's going to come down to whether we obey God's word or we're going to pay attention to what man wants. Amen. I mean, it comes down to that. It's as simple as that. And if you are buried into what man's beliefs are, then you're going with them. You've got to remember that. If you are tied with man then you're going with man. But if you're tied with the Lord's words, then you're going with the Lord. And there's two different, two different obstacles right here that we have to face. And it's going to get tough because I'm telling you folks, they're in, the, they're in the plans of right now making this hate speech. And I'm telling you, it's coming soon, real soon. So we're going to have to decide whether we believe in God's word or do we believe in these lunatics that's trying to run this country? And I know where I stand. I'm pretty sure I know where everyone else stands. But I think that's going to be the clear message right here to this world right here today. Is what we do. Yeah. Is what we do. Because the world's looking at the church. A lot of them are looking for us to fail. A lot of them are looking for this to go away. They hate the church. They don't want anything to do with God's word, period. And it's going to be a battle right here. And it could be right here. It could be right here in this building. But we're going to have to decide, each and every one of us individually, where we stand. That's right. Do we stand with God's word? Or do we stand with these lunatics that's running this place? Because, I mean, it's just as simple as that. It's, it's not any more complicated than that. The devil has, the devil has control. And we know he has control. He's the powers of the air. He's here. And I think he's here knowing that he has a little time. And that's why you're seeing a whole lot of rampant stuff going on right now. And it's going to get a lot worse. Don't think it's going to get better. It's not. But we have that blessed hope. And he's coming back. And I think he's coming back very soon. That's just my opinion. Just me. But everything is in place for him to come back. We're waiting for absolutely nothing to happen before he says, come up here. And it's just like that. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for that. Let's get off of this. Let's get off of this rock right here for a while. I tell you, it's going to get crazy, folks. And you've got to be ready for this, too. Because we could be at war. I mean, we could very well be at war very soon. So you've got to prepare yourself for what's coming. I'm not trying to scare anybody in here or anything else. God has us. There is no doubt in my mind, God has us right here. He sees us right here this morning. Even though it's Saturday afternoon, he's right here with us. No doubt about it. But like I said, the decisions are coming. And it's going to be individual decisions. This isn't a body thing. This is individual decision right here. Either you're with God or you're with man. One or the other. You can't, be in, you can't be in both. You have to be in one or the other. So remember that. Remember the decisions you have to make because it's coming soon. 
If everyone please rise today, I'm reading from Acts chapter 5. I'll be reading 14 through 32. I'm reading from the book. You can read right along. The apostles heal many. Meanwhile, the apostles were performing many miracles and signs and wonders among the people. And the believers were meeting regularly at the temple in the area known as Solomon's Colonnade. No one else dared to join them, though everyone had high regard for them. And more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord, crowds of both men and women. As a result of the apostles' work, sick people were brought out into the streets on beds and mats so that Peter's shadow might fall across them as he went by. Crowds came in from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits, and they were all healed. The high priest and his friends, who were Sadducees, reacted with violent jealousy. That sounds a little familiar too, doesn't it? They arrested the apostles and put them, put them in jail. But an angel of the Lord came at night and opened the gates of the jail and brought them out. Then he told them, go to the temple and give the people this message of life. So the apostles entered the temple at about daybreak and immediately began teaching. When the high priest and his officials arrived, they convened the high council along with the elders of Israel. Then they sent for the apostles to be brought to trial. But when the temple guards went, in, went to the jail, the men were gone. So they returned to the council and reported the jail was locked with God standing outside, but when we opened the gates, no one was there. When the captain of the temple guard and the leading priest heard this, they were perplexed, wondering where it would all end. Then someone arrived with the news that the men that they had jailed were out in the temple, out in the temple teaching the people. The captain went with his temple guards and arrested them, but without violence. For they were afraid the people would kill them if they treated the apostles roughly. Some more of that today, too. Then they brought the apostles in before the council. Didn't we tell you never again to teach in this man's name? The high priest demanded. Instead, you have filled all Jerusalem with your teaching about Jesus, and you intend to blame us for his death. But Peter and the apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human authority. Hear that? Yeah. We must obey God rather than human authority. That's coming from Peter. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you killed him by crucifying him. Then God put him in the place of honor at his right hand as prince and savior. He did this to give the people of Israel an opportunity to turn from their sins and to turn to God so their sins would be forgiven. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, who is given by God to those who obey him. May God bless the reading of his, of his word. You may be seated. When I looked over on this side of the church, there are actually three Caitlins over there. <laughs> I don't think anybody could say that. Every other row, there's a Caitlin. Yes. Isn't that cool? Oh, <laughs> I know it. it it's, that's really strange. Anyway, before we continue, I wanted to make the announcement uh, for those that were not here Wednesday is this coming Wednesday we're going to begin having Wednesday night services at the school auditorium. Now for now they're still at 7 until Nick gets back and that'll be 6.30 but at 6 o'clock in the back conference room behind the sanctuary we have free food yep. and we will every Wednesday night so you don't have to hurry to go get something to eat, it'll be there, and then we will have the service over there at the school. Now on 
Thursday nights, we will be having our in-person prayer meetings downstairs in the chapel at 6.30 every Thursday night. Now, it will not be streamed or televised because of the personal nature of the prayer meetings. And we're gonna have a different person lead it each Thursday night, and there's a sign-up sheet on the table. I think three or four may have already signed up. And so pick a date, and we'll have the board, and all ready if you wanna write the names on the board, and. Uh, basically, you can handle it any way you wish on, in the prayer meetings. We sometimes have some scripture reading or devotional or whatever. We take requests and we pray and we go home. But I think it's important that we meet in person and that uh, you have the opportunity to be prayed over if you need that. And so Wednesday, at, we will be at the school. And then on Thursday, we will be downstairs in the chapel. We have named the chapel the House of Prayer. And it's actually the name of the church that my grandfather pastored mm -hmm. back in the 1930s. I never got to meet him, but he was, and it met on Saturday nights. Yeah. How about that? And so anyway, um, and we want to keep that as a, a house of prayer. Amen. We're going to be looking in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 in just a few moments. And I want to say this. And I won't go into a lot of detail. But the Lord has been leading me over the last few months, more and more, to start returning to the ways of the early church. He impressed on me the other day that we're getting ready to see some early church persecution. And having said that, if that's true, we need early church power. The early, the, the early church had incredible power. Now, that did not go away. We just let it go. It's still there for the taking. And having said that, I've made a couple of rather bold statements and moves to where I have said publicly that the government has no say-so in two institutions, the church and even marriage. It's time that the church took those two back. Amen. Now, yes, indeed. Now, I'm going to tell you ahead of time, I've caught a lot of flack for that. And there are a handful of people that don't want to come here no more because I don't obey the laws of the land instead of the law that's in here. And that's fine. I wish them well. But pray hard about that because some people are trying to start trouble. I'm just going to say that. and I don't want to go any further, but if I have to, I will call it out from the pulpit because I'm not going to tolerate anybody sowing seed of discord in this church right here. I'm not going to allow that. Amen. And, uh, having said that, Paul here writes to the church at Corinth about spiritual gifts. Now, this is something that's a big no-no in a lot of churches, modern churches today, because a lot of people don't believe this exists. But until the Word of God tells me that it does not exist anymore, then I'm going to preach it. And I have seen it manifested in a number of people over the years that I have worked with enough to know that they are real and they are true. And if we do not start recognizing the spiritual gifts of the Bible, then this world can tear the church apart. And each of you are uniquely gifted with something from the Holy Spirit. He can give you one gift, two gifts. He can give you ten. It said however he decides. And, and let, let, me, let me say this here also. Don't you ever think for one moment that you are not worthy or qualified or fit or anything because nobody is. There isn't a soul in this building that is qualified for anything. Me too. And nobody that really knows the Lord is. God is the one that qualifies you. God is the one that justifies you, sanctifies you, and gives you the gifts. Does anybody think that the disciples for one moment 
was uniquely qualified to do the incredible things that Jesus had them do? They were fishermen. Does anybody know how rough a fisherman is back in those days? They were rougher than a corn cob. They were crude. They were loud. They were obnoxious. Do I need to go on? But yet God changed their lives and gave them incredible gifts and powers and, and they wrote the Bible and they started the church and they led thousands and thousands to the Lord not because the world thought they were qualified, the world thought they were not. As a matter of fact, as Mike read, even the religious leaders hauled them in and ordered them not to teach in the name of Jesus. But they said, we ought to obey God rather than men. You're going to need these spiritual gifts in the days to come because each and every one of you are going to be confronted by some entity, some power, some person uh, about what you believe. And you better have the, the power of the Holy Spirit to back you up or you will fall apart. And so here Paul talks about it. He says, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. I will admit when I even went to seminary, I was ignorant about spiritual gifts because I was told by a number of my teachers that these things aren't for today. Well, the Bible says that the spiritual gifts are for the edification of the church. And they said, well, oh, well, we, we have the Bible now. We don't need that. Well, they had the Bible then. Do we need the Bible and the gifts that it tells about more than the early church did, considering the condition of the churches today. He said, you know that you were once Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols, even as you were led. And he said, so I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, lots of different gifts, but the same Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that gave one of you the gift of preaching, gave you the gift, another one, the gift of prophecy, the gift of tongues, the gift of, I'm jumping the gun, but I'm telling you, it all comes from the Holy Ghost. And we need to start recognizing that he can do these things. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are deacons, there are prophets, there are apostles, there are pastors, there are teachers, there are evangelists, there are all of these other offices, even the office of a bishop. And they're all different, but they all come from the Holy Ghost. There are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Now, when we started this church 28 years ago, first Sunday in January was our 28th anniversary. Before we did that, Donna and I went around, and even after we started it, we went around to different churches and watched what they did, how they worshiped, the different beliefs, the different practices. And we looked at those and we decided that we were going to incorporate a mixture of what we saw in these churches that was good, yes. that was biblical. Yes. And that's why we do things so different in this church. Where in the world are you going to find a Baptist church with a menorah? <laughs> Where are you going to find a Baptist preacher that will wear a prayer shawl in the church sometimes? Hmm? Have you ever wondered why our ushers hold the plate up before the Lord and you've never seen that before? Do you wonder why you get out of your seat to bring your offering? Because it all came from different churches, different diverse churches. We saw that it worked. And we incorporated that into our style of worship. And 
to get back to the early church, you've got to do even more. Before I read on, that's, I want to tell you that's why we're doing changes in the church, like even round robin in the Sunday school. Round robin preaching here, and there's going to be more people that's going to come up here and share that you never would have believed would do it. We're having people leading prayer downstairs. Why? Because a church that has a pastor that runs everything is not a church. It isn't. The church is a place where everyone comes together and exercises their spiritual gifts. And so we're going to be doing a whole lot more of that in the days come. Because we've all got to grow. And the only way to learn how to swim is to get thrown in the river. <laughs> At least that's what my daddy did. And so we want to grow, we want to get stronger, but we can only do that by actually getting in there and doing stuff. And so I'm going to go over some of these gifts here, and you look and see it maybe what God has given you. Like I said, there's diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. The spirits or the different manifestations of the spirits are given to us to help us grow, to profit us, and to lift up and edify the church body. Not to make money off of. All right. Now, for to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom. There are people in this church that has wisdom that is beyond their years and definitely beyond mine. And I like to go to them. And there are some people outside of the church that one was my mentor, mentor, a pastor from Monroe Church of God many years ago. Loved that brother, Brother Newcomb. And he had incredible wisdom. And I would go to him privately and ask him things of what I should do. And, and he always had a word of wisdom. There are people in here that does too. You need to listen to them. Then there is another has the word of knowledge by the same spirit. Those are the scary ones. Because they can tell you what's been going on in your life and have never heard it. Pastor Bowley was very famous for that. And we had a youth pastor that could do that. He'd scare everybody to death. He'd tell them everything they did that last week and all about them. And, uh, and they have a unique perspective on what's going on. God does it. That's the Holy Spirit. I, I always remember, like one time I was uh, over in town and Pastor Bowley was at a, at the, at the shopping mall. He said, hold on, I, I got to... I gotta go outside a minute. He went running outside into the parking lot, and goes up to this car where there's a woman sitting behind the wheel weeping. He pecked on the window and she let it down a little bit. He said, ma'am, I'm a minister of the Lord. I loved it when he said that. I was telling Jamie about that. And he said, God told me to come out here and tell you that you had a terrible fight with your husband, but it's gonna be all right and let me pray with you. She turned white as a sheet and said, how on earth did you know that? He said, because God does, and he told me. And he prayed with her, and she was okay. You can't fake that, buddy. That's real. And there are certain people that get that gift. To another, the gift of faith by the same spirit. Now, what does that mean? We all have faith. But there are some people that have a stronger faith and a, a, a supernatural faith that is above everyone else in here, and those are the ones you need to talk to to pray for you. <laughs> Kid you not. Mm. I am thankful for the faction of ladies and gentlemen that have been showing up to the hospital every week and praying for Brother Nick and others that are in the hospital, they are exercising an incredible gift of faith 
even though they may not know that too, but y'all do now. As a matter of fact, a couple of days ago, I went in Nick's room and we talked. We talked. I told him, I said, Brother Nick, when you were still in a coma, they ran a brain scan on you and didn't find nothing. That wasn't very good. He got to laughing so hard he got choked. And I said, I didn't know what that meant. And I said, and I found out it was a good thing. And I was kidding him, and he said, thank you, thank you, thank you for the prayers. And once they get that trach out of his throat, you won't be able to shut him up. He's watching right now, so Nick here, you know, we love you, brother. A miracle. Because of exercising faith in God and God honored the faith. That's a gift. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. Are those gifts still real today? Yes, they are. I've seen people come in here with terminal illnesses before. And people would gather around and lay hands on them and God chose to heal them and they're still alive today. Not, that does not, like I said, if it, when it's your time to go, it's your time to go. But if it ain't your time to go, God will honor that. Amen. To another, the working of miracles. We, we have miracle workers in this church, even though they don't realize it. And they are the people that feed the hungry. You go down there and look in that food bank. Go down there and work in that food bank and you will see miracles. And I mean real miracles. And not just in that area, but in other areas as well. To another prophecy. We have to be careful with this gift of prophecy. It's not to be taken lightly and you better be sure that God told you to say it before you say it. Deuteronomy chapter 18 used to have a formula of how we handle prophets. If it said if one comes to you with a prophecy and it doesn't come true, you're supposed to kill him. Whew. That separated the men from the boys back then. <laughs> now all these people going around saying, God told me this, God told me this. He hadn't told them no such thing. They're doing it to make a hype and bring attention to themselves. A real prophet, very few people are even going to know who he is or he, who she is. They are very humble. To another, and this is one, a gift that is badly needed, the discerning of spirits. Everything that tucks a Bible under its arm is not a child of God. Beware of that. Beware of that. And if red flags start going up, God tells you something's wrong, you need to back away from it. That's discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. And to another, the interpretations of tongues. Yes, that's still real. It's still true today. And it has to be done in the order that Paul puts it in. But it's real. And I have seen it real. And I have seen it done where it was biblical. But here's the thing. But all these worketh that one and self-same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. The gifts that you got were not given to you because you earned it or you were qualified. It's that the Holy Spirit decided to give you that gift because he knew you could do something with it and it was to edify the rest of the church. Don't ever strut around like Ric Flair because you got one of those spiritual gifts. You be humble before God and thank him that he thought enough of you to give you that. For as the body is one, and a true church is that way, they are one together, all working together for the same goals. I, that's why I love the missions team so much, to watch them working. Oh, my goodness. The missions team is a real model for the rest of the church. 
They just want to help people and get the gospel out and provide for those that are in need. And there's no dissension there. I love that. We are one in the body and we have many members. And all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Christ. We are the body of Christ. And we need to be able to work together. There's a lot of different members. For by one spirit, we're all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. There isn't a different Holy Spirit for the Methodists down the road or the Presbyterians. Same Holy Spirit that's in every, that if it's real, it's the same Holy Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. Now this is where he's saying, never think that the gift that you have is less than someone else. Let me put it this way. When I stand before God for my reward, he's not going to give me any more than the person that vacuums the carpet in this church as long as we are faithful. That's all he's looking for is are you faithful? Not what position you hold, but what you do with that position. That's what he's looking for. If the foot shall say, I'm not the hand, so I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where were the smelling? But now God has set the members, every one of them, in his body as it has pleased him. Just know that whatever it is that God has given you to do, and if you're doing it, it pleases him. It pleases him. It's kind of like the time that Old Roberts and Jerry Falwell and a J.B. Hunt truck driver all died at the same time and they were sitting in the waiting room up in heaven to get in. Peter comes out and welcomes that truck driver right on in there first thing and he makes them other two sit out there all day long. So they get a little perturbed and they call Peter. They said, you know who we are? They said, yeah, I know who you are. Well, why'd you let that J.B. Hunt truck driver in before we did? He said, because he scared the devil out of more people than both of y'all put together. <laughs> The point I'm making is it doesn't matter if you're driving a truck for Jesus or you're standing behind a pulpit. It's what you do with the job that he has given you. Do you use your job to spread the gospel and be a witness to others? That's what he's saying. All right. But now God has set the members as it's pleased him and if they were all one member, where were the body? But now there are member, many members, but yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more than those members of the body which seem to be more feeble or necessary. So if you feel that what God has given you is feeble, do remember this. It's necessary and maybe even more necessary than what some of the other ones are doing. And so be grateful. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. And so whatever you do for Christ... I want you to know you're appreciated. Not only by me and by the other members of this church, but by who it really counts with the Lord. Whatever it is you are doing for him, if it is for him and for his glory, then it's honorable and it's awesome. And he said there should, that there should be no schism or division in the body. There is nothing worse than division in the body of Christ. It causes nothing but absolute chaos and grief. And it should never be. But that the members should have the same care 
one for another. We should all be ready to pray for one another and to pick one another up, to restore one another. That's our job. Sad part is the body of Christ is the only army that shoots its own wounded quite often. And that should never be. That should never be. Whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. If one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. We should all be that tight together, that one together, that we do that. Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. And then he talks about other positions in the church that God gives people. And this is one that's not recognized by the modern church either. God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, gifts of helps, gifts of governments, and diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Donna and I went to a church one time, not far from here, that everybody in the church just about were musicians. It was pretty interesting, but it was strange. When we pulled up in the church parking lot, we were the only ones, really, that didn't pop the trunk and whip out a guitar, a banjo, or a fiddle or something out of it. And when we got in there, there were all of these people on the stage pray, playing. I thought that was really interesting, but it was strange. And it says, like, is everybody an apostle? It's kind of like I went to one of these meetings for seminary professors. And this, it kind of made me queasy. They were all going, doctor, doctor, doctor. It sounded like I was at an AMA convention. <laughs> Please. Are they all apostles? Are they all prophets? Are they all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? No. Each person has something that God has given them. He said, but, you know, covet earnestly the best gifts, but yet I show unto you a more excellent way. Our concern should always wind down to souls. There is a lost world out there, and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and we must concentrate on leading them to Christ and using our gifts to build one another up in the church so they will have the encouragement and the strength to go and do that. If we obey what the Word of God says about that, then the church will run like it is supposed to run. And it'll grow like it is supposed to grow. I'm really thrilled to see this many people on a Saturday afternoon. Jordan told me I need to become a rabbi and do it every Saturday. <laughs> I got the outfit back there, but I just don't think that's going to work too well. But, you know, this is, a, this is wonderful. When you can say, let's get together as a body on Saturday because Sunday's going to be roughing, and there you are. And so that says a lot, but we have a lot more to do. We have a lot more growing to do. We need to be strengthened, and we do that by praying for one another, lifting each other up, and being as one in the body of Christ. Is that difficult? Yes, it is, because we're all so different, but it can be done. And when it's done, then we will do like the early church. The early church was in one accord. Did they have problems? Yes, they had problems, but they had the same goal, the same desire. And they had the power to back it up. And so in the days to come, that's what I am aiming for is the church needs to do the things that God gave the church and let the rest of the world deal with what the rest of the world needs to deal with. 
We will be there to tell them about Jesus. But as far as allowing the world to intrude into the things of God, we're not going to do that. We can't do that. Because these are things that are entrusted to us by the Lord and the Lord only. And so let's be determined that we're going to have Holy Spirit power when all of the persecutions and the problems and the chaotic things come along and that we will follow him. If you have the power of the Holy Spirit, you can. You can. And so that's what we need to be striving for in the days to come. Let's all stand, if we would, please.